Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing great today. It is a kind of a chilly day here in the Buckeye State of Ohio. Very autumnal-like, which actually goes perfectly well with the topic of today's video, which is all about chrysanthemums, or mums, as you may have heard them called. Um, so these, as I am sure you are aware, are just your classic fall flower. They are so beautiful. They come in these beautiful, they come in so many colors, but I think they look really nice in these sort of autumnal colors, which again, fits very well with this time of year. So I wanted to show you guys all the mums I have blooming in my garden and give you some tips and tricks on how you can enjoy your mums for the longest and how you can even get them to come back if you're interested in that. Uh, that'll be at closer to the end of the video. But so this is a mom that I actually got a while ago. I think I got it in September in this beautiful hanging basket. Now, this hanging basket was originally green, actually. I actually had strawberries in this hanging basket that I have since planted in the ground. Um, but I actually decided to spray paint it orange. And I actually wanted, and that kind of sparked an idea for future years is instead of getting um, like the hanging baskets of mums, just buy one in just those plastic nursery pots and plant them in spare hanging baskets and they do great and it's cheaper and and yeah and you can even customize your hanging basket so this will be like my fall hanging basket so that's a little interesting tip in case you're interested in that so yeah this is a beautiful see this beautiful mom it's beautiful orange mom i love orange especially in fall obviously because it just gives you all those, excuse me, those cozy fall colors. So this is one. So this is just one of the mums I'm going to show you here. So let's go on to showing you the other ones. So here are some other mums that I actually planted all the way back in August and <laughs> they're still going, um, but they actually didn't really have any flowers when I got them. But as you can see, they are all full of blooms. Some of them look like they're even starting to fade, but that's okay. Um, so these are these beautiful white mums. Now this, I got white ones here on purpose because this is actually, and I mentioned it in my previous video on my garden tour, that this is actually where I buried my pet that actually had to be put down this summer. You can see there's his, his little headstone and have this beautiful rose bush over top of it. So I kind of wanted to go, and he was white, so I wanted to go with all white flowers. And I think it looks really pretty and it's a great way to remember him by. But yeah, I can see like, so yeah, I mean, that, that's sad of course, but you can see they come in this beautiful white. So yeah, so yeah, it is, this is a little bit of a sad spot, if you will, but I think the mums, are a great tribute to him. And I actually am going to be planting bulbs here probably in a couple weeks. Some white daffodils and snowdrops here. So here's some white mums and there are some others that I have in some big pots that are gorgeous that I'm going to show you in just a second. So here I have this massive pot of mums that <laughs> this, these were admittedly kind of expensive, but this is like a massive, like seven color thing of mums I got at my garden center. I actually got two of them. And yeah, like I said, and I did actually, they are, they were expensive. And I did mention these in my previous video on my garden tour. Um, but like, aren't these pretty? These are so gorgeous. I really love like the contrast of so many different colors. Oh, that one's broken. Um, but you see, I have these yellows, whites, oranges, kind of, I don't know, is that like a golden? Or no, I think that's just not quite open yet. But yeah, I have these oranges, kind of reddish, pinks, whites. Oh, it's so pretty. And yeah, so this is a beautiful pot of mums. And I just love these. These were worth every penny. And... Yeah, I am just blown away by them. 
So here's the other pot I have of mums. And yeah, it's just the same thing. I think this one might be a little bit further along, but still think it's just absolutely gorgeous. So you really can't go wrong with mums. They really are just a fabulous flower this time of year. And this is the last mum that I wanted to show you today. This one actually, and I'll get to this later in the video when I talk about getting your mums to come back. Uh, this is actually a mum that came back from last year. I planted this mum last year and look at how huge it got. It's, I don't know how big this is. This is probably from this end to it, this end is, I imagine it's probably about 18 inches at least and maybe two feet or more on this side. Uh, so, so yeah, there is, so yeah, there it is. This is um, what happens if you can get your moms to come back apparently. They'll get so big and they have just so many beautiful blooms on them. So, um, sorry if I'm rambling about how beautiful they are. I really do. I just love mums so much. So, so those are all the mums. And now I want to talk about how you can be successful with them. Now, sorry. Now, as for the care of mums, they really are not that hard. They are not really much different than any other plants that you would find, any other annual or perennial. But generally speaking, but we can just go over in quick review. First and foremost, they do love sun. They are sun loving plants. So make sure that you put these guys in a spot where they can have at least six hours of sunlight every single day. And so they do appreciate lots and lots of sunlight. And, but if you do have a little bit of part shade, they do seem to do they do seem to do fine. I actually have that other pot I was showing you. That one actually does get, well now because the sun is lower this time of year, it is getting a little bit less sun, but it seems to be doing okay. So, and especially if it's hot, it might actually not be a bad idea, which it's not right now, but if you live in a hotter climate and you want them to last a little bit longer, then you can put them in some partial shade and they would actually really appreciate that. Now, soil, um, just standard, well-draining soil. If you have them in pots, make sure the soil is very well-drained. Use a standard potting mix, not garden soil. If you put garden soil in pots, they, the water just doesn't, it, it has a hard time draining and the roots will suffocate and rot and die, which of course is not ideal. So make sure you use a standard potting mix and if they are in the ground, Make sure that you are amending the soil well, that you put in a lot of like organic matter and things like that. They would really appreciate it. Now, so that's kind of soil. So nothing special. Like I mentioned that kind of soil a lot in my previous how-to videos, but yeah, not really, not really anything special. Um, now, watering. This is, super important for moms. These guys, I would say, are a little bit thirstier than your average perennial or annual. These, um, these do like quite a bit of water. In fact, for the first couple weeks I had this while it was warm, I was watering this every single day. And it didn't rot, obviously. It looks beautiful and, but I would recommend checking them in pots at least probably every few days at least obviously that's depending on the temperature if it's hotter probably have to check them more often if it's cooler maybe not as often yeah you, you get the idea but they do appreciate regular moisture do not let them dry out they actually that can that they really just don't like that so try not to let them dry out too much and just keep them continually moist but make sure they are not wet do not let them be sitting in water they don't like it's kind of a hard balance but they don't want to sit in water but they don't want to dry out either so they kind of like just that 
kind of middle ground, that perfect middle ground, not too wet or too dry. Now, as for feeding them, so if you are treating them as annuals, um, which a lot of people do, and that's fine, then you actually do not have to fertilize these at all. Because typically when you're getting them, you're getting them in the fall when it is, when their plants are already starting to slow down and they're not going to be using it and they actually do not like fertilizing when they start to bud, which I think that's probably more important if you're planning on, well, actually, what if you get them as annuals, then don't, just don't feed them at all. But if you're growing them as perennials, don't feed them pat and when they start forming buds. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking right now. Um, so you need to feed them. If, you're, if, they, if you have perennials, if you're treating them as perennials, then you can feed them probably once or twice a year if you're feeding them with slow release and maybe probably every month at least if you're doing liquid feed. Um, I think for them it would probably be easier to, um, to use a slow release. That way you don't have to remember to do it. In fact, that red one I was showing you that was in the ground that was massive, I actually did not feed that one at all and it did fine, but I think it would probably do even better if I fed it. So, so again, if they're annuals, don't feed them at all. If they're perennials, then feed them probably once or twice a season, probably once in spring, probably when you start seeing them come up. And again, maybe in like June, or maybe early July before they start budding, um, but definitely not past July. So I would say after the end of July, then don't, don't feed them anymore after that. Now, uh, now this section of the video is actually going to be about how you can get your mums to perennialize. In fact, why don't I go over to that big one? Um, so I think it better fits this section of the video. Now, as for getting your mums to come back, and so it's actually not that hard to get your mums to come back. Um, now, generally, the common advice you will hear is to plant them in the spring. Now, that obviously is a little bit difficult unless you special order them, because obviously, no one is really thinking about mums in the spring, obviously. You're thinking about your daffodils and tulips and all that stuff. And you're an getting your summer annuals out and all that. But, so you're not really, so they're not, obviously you're probably not gonna find them in your garden centers, excuse me, in the spring. But, there is another way, and that is when you get them, when you start seeing them come in, I usually start seeing them come in to like my big box stores around like August-ish. Get them in the ground then if possible. And I would say if you live in a colder climate, like, and these are generally speaking, these are hardy down to zone five. So that's about negative 20 degrees, which is <laughs> really cold. But um, so kudos to you guys up in more northern climates. Um, but they really, I would say in the colder areas of its growing zone, I would probably not have them in the ground or I would get them in the ground, excuse me, probably probably not after the middle of September. Um, these ones, when I planted these last year, I think it was about mid-September, and as you can see, it came back just fine. So they do want to be planted as early as possible so that they can establish roots. And another thing I actually forgot to mention earlier, and this would actually apply even if you were growing them as annuals. When you are buying mums, Again, should have mentioned this earlier. <laughs> I can't believe I, I didn't. But make sure that you get them in bud stage. So, so like this would be very pretty to see in the garden center, obviously. And if you wanna go for kind of an instant effect and you're not worried about it coming back or you're getting them late and you just want some late season color, 
then you can get them with some flowers opened. But especially if you're planning on getting them to come back, get them in when their buds look kind of like this, when they're still tightly budded, because they will last much longer. Um, you don't want to get them in full bloom because they won't last as long. And also, they don't... And I think, from what it seems like, they actually root better if they are planted when they're not full of flowers so that they can still focus on putting down some roots. So, yes, make sure that you get them in bud stage, especially if you want them to perennialize. But again, it's up to your preference. If you want instant effect, then you can get them in full flower. But I prefer to get them in buds so I can have them last as long as possible. So, and then the last tip I would like to mention is, um, or another thing, excuse me, I don't know if it's the last, but I would also like to mention that, especially in their first winter, um, you should obviously mulch them Make sure their roots are very well mulched when the when it starts getting really cold and leave all of the stems exactly as they are. So like this plant, I like once the frost comes and it kills it off, and it kills it off, yeah, it will, I just leave all of the stems exactly as they are. And what will happen is they, it will help to insulate the crown. And I feel like it kind of acts like if they were in nature. Like, you don't see people cutting down plants um, for the winter in the wild, obviously. So, like, why would you need to do that at home? And with mums, that is especially true. Because, again, they can be a little bit tender. And, and keeping their foliage up and their stems and cutting them down more like maybe mid-spring-ish when you start seeing growth coming out is ideal. So do not cut your mums back, especially if you live in the colder areas. It actually helps to insulate them so that hopefully they'll come back. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about as far as mums are concerned today. And um, I hope this cut video wasn't too long, um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you the mums I have and some tips on how you can be successful because I'm telling you, my garden would just, it would just not be fall without mums, in my opinion. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I'd hope you guys would please give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and um, I really appreciate that, and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.